Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the Christocentric Meal, a daily reflection of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Abel Damina is my name. You must help us invite friends, family members. Let's get in the world. It's going to be a powerful time of study this morning. And co-hosting the broadcast with me today is my wife, Dr. Rachel Damina. Honey, good morning. Greetings everyone. Good to be with you wherever you are this time today. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we pray for viewers around the world, and we thank you for this singular time of fellowship together this morning, looking into the perfect law of liberty. Lord, I pray for everyone that is connected to this broadcast, that the eyes of your understanding be flooded with light, that you will come to a place of revealed knowledge, accurate knowledge, precise understanding, appreciation of God's word. And we pray that your eyes be open to know the hope of your calling, to know the riches of your inheritance in Christ, and to know the exceeding greatness of the power that is locked up on your inside, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And we declare that today as the word comes with clarity, you are built up, edified, and you are equipped, and Jesus is glorified. Thank you, Father, for answer prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. All right, let's get into this study. Receiving in prayer. We'll be looking at prayer from different angles in scripture. Today we're looking at receiving in prayer. If you paid attention very carefully, when I started teaching, I said that the New Testament is a receiving testament. In Acts chapter 19, Brother Paul asked them in Ephesus, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Received. In John it says, a man can receive nothing except it be given to him from above. In Mark, it says you receive when you pray. So it's all about receiving, receiving, receiving. And most times, you know, the problem with the church is not God giving. It is them receiving. It's Brother Copeland some years ago who said something like, he said he was praying and asking God to give him this, give him that, give him that, and telling God, you've not given me this, you've not given me that. And God said to him, stop blaming me for your failure to receive what I have provided. And that's where many believers are. Mm. They're are blaming God. They're blaming their pastor. They're blaming brethren in the church. They're blaming everybody else. In fact, some of them blame their ancestors. <laughs> they blame the family they come from as being wicked and evil and have hindered them from being right. what they ought to be in life. Illiteracy is not good. When people are illiterate of spiritual things, right. somebody says, I'm designed for the city but tied in the village. Who tied you in the village? Your mind is your problem. Your mind is still in the village. And all you need is not some kind of deliverance. You just need knowledge, the knowledge of God's word. All right, so many are blaming everything else but themselves for where they are. And they are playing the victim. And actually, it is they themselves that are victimizing themselves. And we're going to see in today's study that the New Testament, is a receiving testament and God has provided everything. Your responsibility is to reach out and take hold of what God has provided. Honey, read for us Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. So like I said the other day, you shall have them when you, when you believe you receive. When you pray. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's the way we did it. You shall have them when you believe you receive when, when you pray. Mm -hmm. See that? That's the way. So when you prayed, you received at that instance because you believed. Right. So the one that has the responsibility to receive in the place of prayer is the one who is praying. And Jesus makes this very clear. The word responsibility, somebody says, is responding to ability. Mm -hmm. You have the ability in you, you must respond to that ability on your inside, okay? Take so, yes, it. take advantage of it, seize it, Jesus. and utilize it mm -hmm. to get what is yours in Christ. Jesus makes that very clear. Read for us on the first John 5, 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, scripture according to his will he hears us yes uh, yes if we ask anything yes according to his will he hears us yes all the time his yes will is to hear us yes, yes. the punctuation so, there has to yes. be corrected yes this is the confidence we have in him yes if we ask anything 
comma. Yes, anything, comma. Yes, according to his will, he hears us. According to his will, he hears us. Yeah. Yes. It's his will to hear yes. us all the time. According to his will, he hears us mm. if we ask anything. Yes, exactly. You see, according to his will, mm. he hears us if, if we ask anything. God this is our confidence. You. Yes. When you ask for anything, yes. that's his will. Yes. It's not if you ask according to his will. No, 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 no. no. His will is to, to hear. hear you when you ask. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, so... And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we deserve. So that it explains that, it. That ex it if we know that he hears us yeah. because his will is to, to hear, hear us. us. Do you see that? His will is to hear so us. So stop being hung up on, I don't know if he's God's will. No, 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 no. Uh, his will is to hear, is to hear us. And if we know he hears yes. us, which is then his will, yes. whatsoever we ask, we, we, we know a, that we have, have the petitions petition that we desire of him. So, no limitation. You see that? Answered prayer guaranteed. Look at even that phrase. We know yes. that we have the petition that we desire of him. So yes. It doesn't now say according to his will. No, no, no. That you desire. Yes. So, it shows that the will there is willingness to, to, to hear you. Not his will of what you're asking. Right. What you desire, not right. what he desires. Right. Yeah. Right. According to his will, his will is to hear you. Right. Mm -hmm. God always hears us when we make our request. Mm -hmm. It's in his hearing that we are confident that he gives that which we ask for. Yes. In prayer, we don't have a delay from God. No. It's express. There's no delay whatsoever. Once your mindset is like that, no delay. Change yes. around you. No delay whatsoever with God is express. <laughs> express. No speed limit. No traffic lights. is express with God. James 1, 5, 6, and 7. Read for us on him. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraided not, and it shall be given him. Yes. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Let him not think. Mm. Now, he didn't say, let not that man think that the Lord will give him anything. Uh, do you even say, because the only place where you can waver is when you're wondering, is it God's will, is it not God's will? And when you're you wavering, you can't receive. So you can't receive. Because he that wavered is like that a wave of the sea is driven with the wind. Situations are driving you around. I feel good. I don't feel good. God is happy with me. I feel good. God is happy with me. I'm not feeling good. I don't think God loves me today. You're wavering. Will God answer? Will God not answer? And when you're wavering like that, the Bible says, let not that man think that he shall receive. So there must be a consistency of our confidence in God's consistency to hear us. That's key. Our consistency in our confidence in God's consistency to hear us all the time, which is his will in Christ Jesus. Yeah. The action should be in faith, mm. same as what Jesus said. Believe that you receive them. So you see, God is not upgrading, he's not changing. No. He's not one uh, checking if you are okay to good enough to receive. Not at all. He said you should believe that you receive it. Right. God is not changing his mind. About no, you. he doesn't change his mind. Wow. And for most of the time, the problem with many believers, mm. including those of you watching, is what you were fed over the years. Yes. You were taught that you must qualify. Right. You were taught that you must meet you must certain, certain conditions. Uh, you were taught that you must be in a certain mode before mm -hmm. God can hear you. You've been taught that for years. It has entered your system. Yes. Even without thinking, that's what you are, you are working towards. Working with. So now you have to unlearn, you know, flush out all that and simply see the scriptures the way it is. That it is God's will to hear you all the time. Even Jesus said it, I thank you, Father, that you hear me always. He's not different to Jesus. No. Because that's him right there on earth. He doesn't love Jesus more than he loves you. He hears Jesus always. He hears you always. Me too. If he hears Jesus always, he hears me always. Yeah, in John 17, Jesus led a prayer, a high priestly prayer for you. And he said, Father, show them that you do not love me more than you love them. It's in John 17. 
It's in John 17. That the glory I had with you, I have given them. That they may be one in me and I in them and they in us. No more, no less. So if he hears him always, he hears that is his always. character. Mm. It means he hears us all. He, he won't really hear him does. and change when he comes to us. No. He does not change. He does not find this fault. His character is consistently, constantly constant. Mm. God's character is to give to all without finding fault. Yes. This means it is our responsibility to receive mm. what has been given. And stop finding fault with your own self. That's right. That hinders your ability That's to right. receive. You also stop finding fault with yourself and stop so disqualifying yourself mm -hmm. and get rid of anybody around you <laughs> who delights in making you feel <laughs> no, no. that you are not fit, fit that you are not good enough. <laughs> get rid of such people yeah. because they will build around you an atmosphere of unbelief wow. that hinders the operation of God. Mm. God walks through his word and mm. through faith. Mm. Satan walks through doubt, fear, unbelief and circumstances mm -hmm. as peter looked at the wind he satan he convinced him and he began to doubt and he began to sink so satan walks through circumstances mm -hmm. he walks through doubt fear god walks through his word mm -hmm. and faith yeah. you stay in faith by starving doubt fear unbelief which are all products of ignorance mm -hmm. They're all products of ignorance. You starve that doubt. You starve that fear. You starve Satan. The receiving is by faith. That's key. The receiving is by faith. A man that acts and stays in doubt cannot receive. Cannot. He didn't say God will not give him. God has given. Remember, God does not react. God proacted. Everything has been provided. All you are required to do is reach out and take delivery of what is yours. Mm -hmm. This does not mean God has not given. Mm. Rather, we have to receive by faith. Matthew 21, 22, read for and us. All things, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Believing, words, you shall receive. That is so clear. <laughs> whatsoever you, you shall ask. Yes. So you, you see how it negates that mindset that right. if it's God's will, you know, if you, if you ask anything according to his will, that's not according to his will. So whatsoever you shall ask, believe in, you receive. You understand? Yes, it's like somebody who says, well, pray for me, I have a headache. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for healing. Mm. Headache, go, be healed. Somebody says, pray for me, I have cancer stage four. Mm. Say, wait first. Let me find out if it's the will of God ah, to heal you. See now, we are qualified because in your mind, mind you think cancer, cancer is bigger, bigger than a headache. headache. <laughs> and the power needed to heal that one is It's more. in a different grade. <laughs> Jesus case. said, which one is easier? easier to say. In Luke to chapter sin. 5. Uh. To forgive sins or to, or to heal people. this man mm. who was paralyzed, but bedridden. Mm -hmm. But that you may know the that the same power that forgives heals. Mm. I not only forgive this man, but I command him to stand up, oh. take your mat, and mm. go. Mm. And the power was present because the word was taught. Yeah, yeah. The word of God is the container of God's power. Oh. And God's power is not in grades. Not in grade. You know, grade it's one, grade two. It's the same power. Oh. Forgive sins, same good. power cleanses you of every unrighteousness, mm. same power heals your body, mm. same power you use in dominating circumstances and situations, same power. And there is no different requirement for each of them. Mm -hmm. You know, no. It's the same power given at the instance of the finished work of Christ. Mm. The believing is for receiving. Mm -hmm. When you act, God gives. However, we have to receive. At salvation, God gave to us Jesus. See that? Mm -hmm. We received by faith. Mm -hmm. By believing in his resurrection. Yes. So also, when we pray, we can only receive by faith. faith. You see, when you received Jesus, you were not in doubt yes. that God wanted you to receive him into yes. your life. Yes. Same thing now, he says, whatsoever you ask in prayer, and all things, whatsoever you ask, yes. believing, you receive it. Yes. So since you were not in doubt about receiving Jesus, in the same confidence, receive whatever you ask in prayer. If you received Jesus without feeling different, mm -hmm. but you know you received but it. through the assurance of the because word. Because the word says so. Mm. 
Why are you waiting for the pain to leave your body before you believe you are healed? It doesn't add up. Some of you, when you received Christ, the cigarette you are smoking was still smelling all over your body. And some of you, even your breath was smoking cigarette for one, two, three years after you were saved, born again. And people who met you thought, and people who met you thought maybe you just finished smoking and you cleaned up. But it's just that the smoke had already entered your system to the point where it had become a part of your breath. But you see, you are saved. It didn't change the fact that you were saved. So why are you waiting for all the symptoms to leave and you feel okay before you say, I'm healed? It means you have not understood how to receive. Mm -hmm. You receive by faith. Mm -hmm. No sign, no physical symptom may be available, mm -hmm. but you the know so. that the word says so. Uh -huh. Just like the pilot will trust his instrument, instrument. even if the whole... Instrument. You know, honey, this is it. In the afternoon, when the weather is dull, it's okay, it's very dull, and the pilot is about to fly. Okay. If you're not experienced in mm -hmm. aerodynamics, mm -hmm. you're so scared. Mm -hmm. You're so worried, oh, the weather is looking bad. Why is the pilot flying even though the weather is bad? Thundering lightning means everyone, the aircraft is taking off. <laughs> you know, it was, <laughs> it was when I started, day, well, yeah. It, to, uh, which I remember. Yes. Then there was the weather was problem. bad. And then, uh, you know, everybody was doing their own thing and we're like trying to not panic. I don't know whether it was with you, I was driving or with one of the girls. Yes. So then they said, ah, and why is this? Thing? It was all of us. Yes. Myself, yes. yourself, and all the three Then girls. I told you, sitting with maybe you i said as far as the pilot did not announce emergency it means that the plane is okay yeah. <laughs> you remember yeah then the person said it's true uh, you know yeah. because the person leading us did not say hey everybody yeah. you know there's trouble over. yeah ah, no matter how the plane is shaking and as far as he's seeing the road and he's not the seeing man is seeing thing. everything you are the only one that is, cannot see with your eye. But the man is using instruments. And his instruments are able to read everything. In fact, one of those flights, the pilot said, the weather is bad, we will try to land twice. If we cannot, we will go back. So the guy went, went. He tried to come down, he went up again. He tried to come down, he went up again and stayed a bit. Then he now said, we will land now. So everybody brace up, we are going to land. And he went, and it was nice landing. <laughs> Because he's looking at this instrument. You are using physical eye. But that's why we walk by faith, mm. not by sight. That faith is by knowledge. You don't look at the physical. You look at the instrument, which is God's word. Our own instrument is the word of God. So we look at God's word. And if God's word say is okay, my brother, mm. even if everything is looking contrary, you stay with the word of God. Because the word knows how to weather its way through the circumstances. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So at salvation, God gave to us Jesus. We received by faith, by believing in his resurrection. So also, when we pray, we can only receive by faith. Praise God. Father, we take authority right now for viewers all over the world, especially people that are afflicted by sickness, disease, and the plague of oppression, depression. We command you to break your holes of our viewers' life today every sickness and disease rooted out from the foundation. We command every hold of the enemy broken completely in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Sick bodies, be healed right now. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we command the devil to get his hands off. Get your hands off of God's property. And we command your bodies be healed, your mind be healed. We command your circumstances to come under control and we speak peace over your situation. Receive direction, receive guidance, and receive understanding. Receive solution today in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. Enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. What a blessing to have all of you connected to this broadcast every day enjoying the word of his grace you must order for the devotional for yourself for friends and family members this is a must have in your library along with other resources of this ministry the announcer will tell you how to order for them and get them and we're looking forward to hearing testimonies of this word building up within you so mightily that nothing else matters just before we go only have one more word for viewers out there mm. Don't forget, you know, actually what you know is what you know. That's and right. it's what to produce for you. So That's know right. what God has said concerning 
your 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 desires or your needs, and then you know apply it. That's right. Begin to receive hundred percent answered prayer. That's right. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Go through the whole of today, giving glory for answers to prayers. We love you guys. Till we come again your way tomorrow, same platform, same time. This is Rachel and Abel Damina saying that the kingdom of God is in power. Ephesians 4, 9. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. Verse 10. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers or pastoring teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Next verse. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Next verse. That we henceforth be no more children. The only time where we will no more be children is in the last sentence of verse 13. Look at it in context. 413. He says, uh, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. God wants all of us to come to that place where we come unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. When we come to that place of maturity, he said, this is what it will produce for us. That we be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sly of men cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive god has given the fivefold or the fourfold ministry to the church for the perfecting of the saints the word perfecting is the word maturing for saints to be matured the church is not an entertainment center the church is a training ground where believers are equipped, where believers are trained, where believers mature, not just mature physically, but mature in Christ, mature unto Christ. Watch this. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the mystery. All right. Next verse. Watch 28. Whom we preach. We preach Christ. Every time you come here, that's what you hear. Whom we preach, we have nothing else to preach. We preach Christ. We preach Christ. Warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. When we preach Christ to you, it is guaranteed that we will present you perfect in Christ Jesus. When we preach Christ to you, it is guaranteed in scripture that you will be presented perfect in Christ Jesus. Warning every man and teaching every man that we may present every man perfect, matured in Christ Jesus. Watch this. So, the fourfold ministry is given to mature the saints, to perfect the saints, to mature the saints. And the diet for maturing the saints is Christ Jesus, whom we preach. Christ Jesus, whom we preach. The only message we have to preach is Christ Jesus. We preach whom, not it. We're not here to preach how to make it. We're not here to preach how to get it. We're not here to preach how to arrive at it. We're here to preach about him, who he is, what he has done for you, what you have in him, what you can do through him. That's the essence of ministry. Now, remember, when he rose from the dead, he didn't talk about what happened to him in his death, burial, and resurrection. The first thing he did when he rose was to give gifts to men. The gifts he gave to men is men to men. He gave men to men. He gave men to men. God Almighty, in his infinite wisdom, set up the fourfold ministry in the local church. There are some people on the internet who are very lawless and very, very irresponsible. And they go on the internet and they are preaching 
their own message is all over the place but they do not have any respect for spiritual authority they are not under any spiritual cover such people are very dangerous they are very very dangerous don't read their materials and don't read their posts before you read anybody mater anybody's material or post on the internet you need to find out his spiritual genealogy who is who does he associate with who is he submitting to who is he relating with god said i will bring my sheep to their own fold to their own fold it's true that there is a universal church but there is also the local church the essence for the local church is so that people can be under authority so there can be order so things are not done carelessly let all things be done decently and in order that's the essence for the local church and the reason why i'm addressing this this morning is because we live in perilous times and, and as your pastor it is my responsibility to keep you aware of things around you so that you are not taken captive by any devil and there are people watching me on the internet and on, on television who i'm also responsible for their spiritual well-being and it's important for me to make mention of that people are saying all kinds of things on the internet so you're preaching all kinds of things they even tell you you don't need a church you can just stay at home and enjoy god after all god doesn't dwell in temples built with hands that is true that is correct but it is still the same god who gave pastors to the church for the edifying of the saints and for the equipping of the saints they can be smarter and wiser than god i'm teaching here anybody that is not submitting to a local church or a group of believers or identifying with a, a, a believing group where the body of truth is delivered to him is out of order and anybody out of order is a danger to your to your spirit soul and your body watch romans chapter 16 because some of them say there's no need for the local church everybody can just stay at home and, and, and serve god on his own Romans chapter 16 verse 1. I commend unto you Phoebe our sister which is a servant of the church. So if there is no local church where was Phoebe serving? If there is no local church where was Phoebe serving that brother Paul commended that she was a servant of the church? Which is at, at St. Clair. Next verse that you receive her in the lord has become its saints and that now this was a commendation to another local church where phoebe was visiting and that you assist her in whatsoever business shall need of you uh, for she had been a sakura of many and of myself also next verse greet priscilla and aquila my helpers in christ jesus next verse who have for my life laid down their own necks unto whom not only i give thanks but also all the churches all the what all the churches of where of the gentiles he is not talking about the universal church he's talking about local body like power city amen so anybody that does not belong to a local body first of all is dangerous number two he's out of order and number three have nothing to do with him he's risky he's out of order praise god i'm teaching here He's out of order. In Acts of the Apostles, when the apostles themselves were threatened, they went back to their own company. They had a company. They had a group they belonged to. Nobody can just be isolated. The Bible says any man that isolates himself rages against all judgment. The Bible says he that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall dwell in the congregation of the dead. God is the one that places people, lonely people, uh, the solitary in homes. This is a spiritual home where believers are equipped and edified. I thought I would hear powerful amen. amen. I needed to clear that. He gave gifts to men for the perfecting of the sin. I hope you have been blessed by that wonderful message. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. For you to grow spiritually, you need to hear, study, and meditate on the word. 
you need to not only hear but to also read and see. And that is why you need the Christocentric meal. This is a book that reveals to you who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. This book interprets and breaks down the word into daily meals, making it easier for you to understand and study, build up and strengthen your inner man, all the while growing your relationship with God and your confidence as a believer. To order this life-changing book and other titles, DVDs and CDs by Dr. Abel Damina, call the number or email the address on the screen. Starting the new year with this book is your first step to guaranteeing an enriched life and new year.